He's really gentle, with gentle people, that is. Well, that's for the sheriff to decide. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie Karens. As a Christian, I'm doing you a favor. Misery Chastain cannot be dead. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. For this list, we'll be looking at the most entitled, demanding, and obnoxious Karens in film. We are, of course, talking about the broader term Karen, and not characters named Karen. We'll be excluding Kens, or Jeremy's, or Terry's, or whatever the internet decides to call them. Sorry, William Defense Foster. You can ask to speak to the manager all you want, but we're saving you for another list. Are our entries the right level of Karen for you? Sound off in the comments. Now on to a very demanding and obnoxious top 10. Number 10, Veruca Salt, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I want you to be the first to find a golden ticket, Daddy. I know, Angel. We're doing the best we can. While most Karens are adults, it's impossible to overlook Veruca Salt thanks to her incessant demands and impressive tantrums. Give me time! I want it now! In fairness, her parents did name her after a wart. And that can't be good for the psyche of a child. You promised, Daddy! You promised I'd have it the very first day! While the 2005 version of Veruca was fairly obnoxious... Daddy, I want another pony. We've got to go with the original. For the scene where she demands a golden goose with the song I Want It Now, which should really be the anthem of the Karens. I want to lock it all up in my pocket. It's my bar of chocolate. Give it to me now. Instead of getting what she wants, she's deemed a bad egg and dropped into a furnace. How I want it now. Number 9. Sally. When Harry Met Sally. It might be unexpected to see Sally here, but she joins our list thanks to her scene in the diner. No, not that scene. Although iconic and memorable, I'll have what she's having. We're talking about the scene between Harry and Sally in an eatery not long after they first meet. I'd like the chef salad, please, with the oil and vinegar on the side and the apple pie a la mode. As well as being an incredibly fussy eater. And I'd like the pie heated, and I don't want the ice cream on top. I want it on the side, and I'd like strawberry instead of vanilla if you have it. She's also somewhat rude and condescending to the waitress. No, just the pie, but then not heated. Later, Harry refers back to Sally's demanding dining habit framing it in terms of high and low maintenance. You're the worst kind. You're high maintenance, but you think you're low maintenance. I don't see that. You don't see that? Waiter, I'll begin with the house salad, but I don't want the regular dressing. I'll have the balsamic vinegar and oil, but on the side. But we think he was just being polite. Why are you getting so upset? This is not about you. Yes, it is. Number eight, Joyce Monroe, Edward Scissorhands. Eddie, this is what I really want to show you. Kathy Baker's joy starts out as a sexed-up cougar, but stalks into Karen territory when she doesn't get her way. Why, oh, Eddie, you're trembling. So am I. Setting her sights on Edward, she gets him alone, then pounces. But her attempt to seduce him backfires, and Edward runs away scared. Jilted, Joyce stamps her feet and tells the neighborhood that Edward came on to her. I felt in my gut there was something wrong with him. She's at the head of the mob at the end of the film, hoping that Edward has met an untimely demise. Fortunately, of course, Edward was alive, just hiding from people like Joyce. What happened out there? I don't want to go home. I want to know. I want some answers. Number seven, Joan Crawford, Mommy Dearest. Though Joan Crawford was, of course, a real person, this entry is devoted to her movie Incarnation, as played by Faye Dunaway in Frank Perry's Mommy Dearest. You're gonna march yourself upstairs to your room and you will stay there until I tell you to come out! No, I won't! No, you won't. The movie is an adaptation of Christina Crawford's autobiography. Yes, you will! So we can only imagine where the line is drawn between the real-life version and the character. Mommy, I look awful! Yeah, I know you look awful. <laughs> but as presented in Mommy Dearest, this is a cruel, borderline insane Karen who frequently loses her temper over the smallest complaints. And I told you, no wire hangers ever! 
she threatens her maid and mistreats her children, who she only adopted for the publicity. Miss Crawford, we don't want any hard feelings. You don't know what hard feelings are until I come out publicly against your product and you'll see how much you sell. Dunaway has said that the role took a heavy toll on her and that she now regrets playing her. Number 6. Prudence Pringleton – Hairspray If after watching Mommy Dearest you thought Joan Crawford was a demanding mother, then you ain't seen nothing yet. It won't be where you're going. The police are on their way. Prudence Prudy Pringleton is as prudish and self-righteous as the name suggests and expects everyone else to follow the same set of rules. You're letting her listen to that race music again. A racist religious fanatic, she believes that tying up her daughter Penny and making her listen to the Lord's Prayer over and over again is doing God's work. Penny Lou Pingleton, you are absolutely, positively, permanently punished. In the original 1988 version, she even has a hypnotist try to coerce Penny into only dating white men. Of all the white boys in school, and how much do you like to date one? Fortunately, Penny does get away with help from her love interest, Seaweed, much to Prudence's dismay. <laughs> Number 5. Mrs. Carmody – The Mist Prudence Pringleton isn't the only super-religious Karen on our list. I have a friend. God up above. I talk to him every day. Don't you condescend to me. Carmody also thinks she's doing God's work, but takes it to violent extremes. There's no defense against the will of God. There's no court of appeals in hell. There's no defense here either. She's already made it onto another of our lists as one of moviegoers' most hated characters. And it's not without good reason. Director Frank Darabont's adaptation of Stephen King's novel has actress Marcia Gay Harden going full tilt Karen from the get-go. Well, it is this kind of hubris that brought the wrath of God in the first place. This kind of pride and defiance of the... Oh. Shut up, you miserable buzzard! Appealing to the highest authority possible as she fires off complaints and accusations in all the wrong directions. Walking on the moon! Yes! Yes! Or, or right. slitting his atoms, or, 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 or stem cells and abortions. Worse, this Karen has loyal followers of Karen Minions. That <laughs> Number four, Annie Wilkes, Misery. Hot on the heels of one Stephen King character is another, in the form of Annie Wilkes. Oh, you bought the wrong paper, Annie. I can't write on this paper, Annie. Well, I'll get your stupid paper, but you just better start showing me a little more appreciation around here, Mr. Man. Kathy Bates plays the character brilliantly, taking toxic fandom to its most Karen as she demands that writer Paul Sheldon, played by James Caan, rewrite his story her way. What do you think I say when I go to the feed store in town? Oh, now, Wally, give me a bag of that effing pig feed and 10 pounds that bitchly cow corn. She berates him for his choice of profanity, locks him up, demands he rewrite a manuscript that she had him burn. Misery Chastain cannot be dead. And that's before we're forced to see the hobbling scene, if you can keep your eyes on the screen long enough to watch. Danny, whatever you think I'm not doing, please don't do it. Uh, sorry, we just shuddered thinking about it. You've been out of your room. No, I haven't. Paul, my little ceramic penguin in the study always faces due south. Number three, Hilly Holbrook, The Help. Another religious Karen who seemed to miss the part about loving thy neighbor. Hilly Holbrook is entitled, judgmental, and smugly superior. She had the nerve to ask if she could help with the children's benefit ball. However, her most damning trait is her racism, which she works hard to reinforce in her social circle. It's just plain dangerous. They carry different diseases than we do. She even campaigns for maids to have to use separate bathrooms, claiming they carry different diseases. This is a sort of Karen who not only thinks that privilege is her God-given right, but that people should thank her for it. As a Christian, I'm doing you a favor. Just for extra Karen points, she considers herself a good Christian too, although Abilene's godless description of her is more accurate. All you do is scan lie to try to get what you want. Abilene, stop. You are godless woman. Number two, Dolores Umbridge, the Harry Potter franchise. Study hard 
and you will be rewarded. Fail to do so, and the consequences may be severe. Just saying the name is enough to invoke a shudder down the spines of Harry Potter fans. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. Sanctimonious, patronizing, and cruel, Dolores Umbridge is the type of person who's either demanding to talk to the manager or laying down a long list of unreasonable rules as the manager. Those wishing to join the Inquisitorial Squad for extra credit may sign up in the High Inquisitor's office. Clad head to toe in pink, like she just stepped out of the 1940s, every inch of the Half-Blood Witch screams magical Karen. So silly of me, but it sounds as if you're questioning my authority in my own classroom, Minerva. Even when smiling, she's angry inside. Umbridge is not to be messed with. Things at Hogwarts are far worse than I feared. Cornelius will want to take immediate action. Plus, drinking tea with three spoonfuls of sugar? Shudder intensifies. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Miss Gulch, The Wizard of Oz Thanks to recent retellings, the Wicked Witch of the West has become a more sympathetic, relatable character. But we seem to have forgotten that her real-life counterpart, Miss Gulch, is the original Karen. I want to see you and your wife right away about Dorothy. Dorothy? Well, what has Dorothy done? What's she done? I'm all but lame from the bite on my leg. Prim, proper, and clearly used to getting her way, she arrives at Dorothy's farm to demand that poor Toto be euthanized. That dog's a menace to the community. I'm taking him to the sheriff and make sure he's destroyed. Sure, Toto did bite her leg, but it was in response to her hitting him with a rake. You can send me to bed without supper. If you don't hand over that dog, I'll bring a damn suit that'll take your whole farm. Miss Gulch insists that she has the support of the law, threatening larger repercussions if she isn't obeyed. He's really gentle. With gentle people, that is. Well, that's for the sheriff to decide. Here's his order allowing me to take him. Unless you want to go against the law. We'd actually go so far as to say she's worse than her Emerald City counterpart. Elmira Gulch, just because you own half the county doesn't mean you have the power to run the rest of us. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.